The voice of football, Martin Tyler, is a coach at National League Southside, Dartford FC. Today, they play St Albans in the playoff semi-final at Princes Park Stadium. And it's not live. It was filmed a few days ago. Anyway, let's crack on with the video. The Darts finished second in the league on 83 points, 20 behind the runaway leaders, Ebsfleet. But that second place finish meant they bypassed the eliminator and went straight to the semi-final. However, the lads behind me in purple, St Albans, finished sixth in the table and had to play Chelmsford in an eliminator game, which they won 1-0. I wonder if they went to Dukes afterwards. Good night out in Chelmsford. The fun doesn't stop there though. The winner of today's game will play either Oxford City or Worthing in the National League South playoff final on Sunday. And if Dartford win, it's back down here at Prince's Park. Get on this. Bit underwhelming that one, eh? <laughs> it was the home side who progressed to Sunday's final after beating Worthing 2-0. The away side were looking to make it back-to-back -back promotions, so a special shout out to them. Right, let's head down the tunnel to the home changing room, where the kit is neatly laid out with your warm-up tops and shorts. Here's a sneak peek of the home kit, more on that a bit later on. Inside the changing room, they have a fully functioning gymnasium, a ginormous speaker, and my favorite, the personalized bar. As we head back out onto the pitch, similar to the Anfield sign, Darford have, this is Prince's Park. At first glance, we thought they had a statue of Scott in the ground. Turns out it was something completely different. So that behind me is the famous wooden man that groundhoppers from around the country come and visit. But what does it represent? It symbolizes that the Princess Park Stadium is an eco-friendly stadium. But to tell us more about that is the groundsman, Jay. Tell us about your garden. Right, so yeah, yeah there's a lot of stress goes into it, a lot of games on it. We're an eco-friendly club. So the roof is made of grass, the pitch, the roof, and the 3G training pitch all drain into the lake, and then that is then pumped back through onto the pitch for irrigation to keep the pitch nice and green. Have you got any pitch designs that you like to do? <laughs> yeah, I have, but um, <laughs> it's just more time-wise. Because we've got so many teams that play out of here, three yeah. teams that play on it, getting the time in between to change the patterns is the, is the issue. I mean, I'll, I'll do like circles, like diamonds. I've always done different patterns, but keep it nice and simple, blocks up and down both ways, and then yeah, as long as it's nice and green, it always looks good. How hard is it to implement a different style on the pitch? How long does that take to do? Depends on how you cut the pitch. So if you cut the pitch one way, so you've got the light stripe there, that will push the grass that way, and when you come back this way, you can see it's dark, so right. it's the grass. It's literally just moving the grass around. But if you need time in between games to put the new pattern in, because you'll still have remnants of the old one. So obviously, imagine the grass is growing, it's got to grow out to then get the new pattern. Love it. Well, it looks great, mate. Happy with it for the semi-final? Um, I'm happy-ish. <laughs> no groundsman's ever happy. You never find a ground. But yeah, so what are we, 69 games now? Wow. So for that amount of games, for the weather we've had this year, I'm happy. The boys are happy with it. That's the main thing. As long as it plays true, we get no dodgy bobbles. <laughs> and the gaffer's not shouting at me for a dodgy cut for me causing a goal. But yeah, no, I'm, I'm happy. And we'd be really happy if you'd subscribe to the channel. This is another non-league club my friend Jimmy Bullard has played for. He started his career at Dartford many moons ago. We actually came down here to the training ground, which is a stone's throw away from the ground, to film a You Know The Drill with Martin Tyler on commentaries. It's an absolute banger. Next to the training pitch is the club shop, where there's plenty of Puma branded merch, as that's their kit manufacturer, as well as coffee cups, glasses, bears, badges, pencils, and rubbers. As we head back through reception, you're greeted with an inspirational quote. The Champions Bar is full of your matchday hospitality guests, and on the wall are pen picks of Martin Tyler, Alan Dowson, the gaffer, and our next guest. This is Mac, head of the analyst team. How are you, mate? I'm all good, thank you, mate. How are you? Very well. Right, tell us how you got the job. So, um, a couple of years ago, I just applied for the job uh, via one of the media team. Spoke to the manager at the time, and uh, yeah, he liked sort of what I could present to the team. And uh, yeah, I've been here ever since. What do you have to do pre-game in the build-up? So look at all set pieces, um, corners, free kicks, um, penalties for the goalkeepers. Look at sort of how the opposition plays, sort of what formations they use, what sort of subs they've used, just so we have a good idea. And then sort of make a game plan with the coaching staff. And what do you do during the game? So then I have a stream from the camera into my laptop and I sort of clip up anything that's sort of more like, important to like our style of play, our philosophy. Um, sort of final third entries, shots, crosses, all sort of the basic stuff. Do you relay that information to the gaffer during the game? For example, if we consider a goal or if we had a good passage of play, I would sort of relay the information, just sort of shout down to the bench. And then post-match, 
what's the job there? Um, watch the game back a couple of times, see if I've missed anything. Then speak to the assistant manager, Christian Jolly, see sort of what he wanted to do for the post-match clips and then present on a Thursday's team. If players score an absolute weldy, are they on your case for the field? Oh, big time. Yeah, big time. <laughs> <laughs> Who scored the best goal? I'd say Luke Coulson versus Braintree. Yeah, he's an yeah. absolute weldy. Well done. Looks to the hooker shot! Oh my word, Luke Coulson! What a goal that is! Here's the club's crest, which is taken from the Dartford coat of arms. Now, if you've ever Googled coat of arms, you'll know they use language that no one has ever heard of. But here's the nuts and bolts of it. You've got the lion standing on the anvil, which represents engineering. You've got the white horse, which is synonymous with Kent. And below that, you've got the bird there, which is the Dartford warbler, which you've seen in Dartford Heath, but apparently was last spotted down in Cornwall somewhere. You've got an arrow, because obviously Dartford are called the darts, and the water there is the Thames, which goes underneath the Dartford Bridge. As for the away side, their crest was redesigned in 2020. It uses the club's famous blue and yellow colours. It features the Saltire Cross, the halo of St Alban and the cathedral's iconic Norman Tower, which completes this modern design. And here's a quick look at their stadium. This is Clarence Park, with a capacity close to 5,000. Could the Saints fans be watching National League football here next season? Back at Prince's Park, the home team were going through their tactics ahead of the biggest game of the season. Then it was back inside for the players to blast out house music from their massive speaker whilst we spoke to the gaffer, Alan Dowson. Alan, huge game today. How are you feeling? I'm oh, looking forward to it. It's a big game. Uh, we beat them 2-1 here not so long ago, but I thought we were a better side. We watched them in midweek. Got some good players. Jeffers scores 30 goals a season. Jeffers, we have in decent form at home, so it should be a cracking game. Looking forward to it. Martin Tyler's on your coaching staff. I believe yeah. he's probably not going to be here today. No, he's, he's, what games are you doing today? He's is it doing, Newcastle? No, he's, no, he's up Newcastle because one of my best mates is assistant manager in Newcastle. You know, he's up the promised land now. Uh, I, so I've just spoken this morning, funny enough. He's gutted, but that's his job. I mean, obviously, he's still the best in the world at his job. But he, he's got it live streamed. So, because the game's later on, he's got it live streamed in his hotel room. So, he'll be watching it before he goes and does his uh, match stuff, you know. You've been working together since 2005 and yeah. had a lot of success. Why yeah. do you work so well together? I think when you get somebody who's best in the world at the job, you try to copy a bit. But we've been good friends as well as, you know, working together. And we've been through a lot together. And um, I don't know what the secret is. I don't know if you can see what the secret is. But somewhere along the line, we haven't done bad. A lot of times they dug out with people that look at where and I'm telling him where to go and he's telling me what to do. And then, we haven't each other and afterwards we're best of mates again so it's a, <laughs> it's a good combination. How crucial will the home advantage be today? Um, we're not great away from home. We've got some players who I think will advise the big occasion, I think. Um, away from home not so good but I'm delighted with them. I thought we might struggle if we didn't get the top three. That's what I honestly think. And what's your style of play? Try to get in the half as quick as we can, get balls in the box, um, push right into their half, be exciting in their area. I want to be defenders to defend. Yeah, it may come across as long ball, not at all. I've never turned up here, I hit it long. But I want me defenders to be defenders. And I want, when we get over half reeling, play as much football as you want. Now that the players are out on the pitch for their warm up, it's time to tell you about a few players of note. We've got two at Dartford, starting with Samir Carruthers. He made his Premier League debut in 2012 for Aston Villa against Liverpool at Anfield. The game ended in a one-on draw and he came on as a late substitute for Barry Bannon. We've also got Charlie Sheringham, the son of Teddy Sheringham. He spent the majority of his career in non-league football. He's bagged six goals this season. Will he be the guy to score a late winner like his dad did in the Champions League final in 1999? And for the visitors, there is only one man, Sean Jeffers. He has been on absolute flames this season. The striker has scored 28 goals in 45 appearances and is the league's second highest top goal scorer. And when these two teams met not that long ago, he scored arguably the goal of the season. Is that your flag? One of them. Yeah. And that one. How'd you get them made up? Got flag companies. You seen the big one? Where'd you keep it? At home. The big one normally stays here. It's normally too big to take away, but we got uh, we got another flag we're about to put up, brand new one. And how do you feel about the game? Nervous, but it, it, we can beat anyone on that day, because whoever turns up, I reckon. As the final flags were being assembled, the Saints fans were playing volleyball with a stray ball that found its way into the away end. The warm-ups were coming to an end and both sets of fans were in good voice. So here's a chant from the home team.
St Albans were brushing up on their finishing whilst the fans were singing this wonderful chant. The flags were waving, which meant the players were on their way. And here they come, Dartford versus St Albans in the National League South playoff semi-final. Let's look at the kits. This is Richard Chin on loan from Charlton, wearing the darts black and white striped jersey. Couple of sprints just to make sure it's comfortable. They wear black shorts and socks, cut off at the bottom so they can wear their comfy regular white socks. And one more sprint for good luck. Mitchell Weiss is wearing St Albans clash kit, which is pretty cool in itself. The shirt is inspired by the club's connection to the music industry, with the club's sponsor being rock band Enter Shikari. Quick snap for the gram, a couple of handshakes, and we're ready to go. And smile and enjoy. All the best. All the best. Smile and enjoy yourself. That's great advice. And Dartford did exactly that. Richard Chin had the ball on the edge of the box. It was a lovely through ball, but the shot was saved by the Saints keeper. A lovely sidewinder pass into the area was flicked on by Bradbury and Richard Chin's shot was again saved by the goalkeeper. This tackle turned out to be a brilliant through ball which Harvey Bradbury brought down lovely and the dink was exquisite. 1-0 to the home side. Luke Colson with another brilliant delivery into the box. The keeper flaps at it, is taken down and then the half buddy is saved and cleared by the Saints. The Saints then went on the attack down the left hand side to cut inside onto his right foot but it was comfortably saved by the keeper. St Albans equalised near the end of the first half, this lovely finish into the middle of the goal. Whilst the Saints fans were celebrating, we grabbed ourselves a burger. Right, we are back. Big games call for big burgers. So I've gone for the bacon cheese half pounder. Um, I've gone for a little addition of the uh, extra hot hot sauce. So hoping that's not gonna kill me. Um, set me back five pound 30. I'm very hungry, so I'm gonna get straight into it. Let's do it. Manageable. Squidgy. Bullseye. Like, like the dark. Winner. Back underway in the second half, Dartford were through on goal. It was a heavy touch. The shot was well blocked, but it was a great recovery. And then the keeper smothers the ball. This was followed by a delightful chip into the box. The keeper comes out and flaps at it and Luke Olsen tries to dink it over everyone, but it just goes wide. Another great delivery into the box. The header comes off the bar, but the Lino's flag was up. At the other end, St Albans had this shot that went straight down the alleyway. Another Luke Coulson delivery was causing problems in the box. The header was saved by the keeper, dropped and then cleared away. So it goes to extra time. Both teams had a little chat before they got back underway the first half of extra time. Now there was a shout here for handball. The slow-mo will reveal, yeah, that's handball. Is that a natural position? Nobody knows anymore. The game's gone mad. Worth mentioning that Samir Carruthers has come on for extra time and he gets straight into the action with this delightful through ball and Luke Coulson's shot is saved by the keeper. Now we're in the second half of extra time and Samir Carruthers plays in Charlie Sheringham Delightful cross, but again, I think the flag went up for offside. So we go straight to penalties. St Albans kick things off. Sean Jeffers dispatched as expected. Samir Carruthers stepped up and his shot was saved by the goalkeeper. St Albans to take a healthy lead in the penalty shootout and it is dispatched into the bottom left-hand corner. Up steps Luke Coulson. Great penalty. Stay calm, everyone. St Albans. Flawless so far, and it's another great penalty. Charlie Sheringham steps up to take his penalty, and he smashes it into the bottom corner and gives the fans a bit of stick. St Albans then scored, which meant that they had to score this one, Dartford, and they do. If St Albans score this penalty, they will go through to the final. Oh, the keeper gets a hand to it, but St Albans will be playing in the final on Sunday. There's the hero, the keeper getting involved with the fans. They love him, singing his name. And the St Albans fans were in good voice at the end. It was a great atmosphere all round. Commiserations to Dartford. Everyone at the club was absolutely brilliant with us. If you've enjoyed the video, please do hit that subscribe button and we'll catch you in the next one.